Hi XR developers! In a previous video, we've looked at the pass-through mode on MetaQuest. We also looked at pass-through windows, which let us project pass-through in a specific window. Today, we're going to look at the opposite, because we want to create virtual windows in our pass-through mode. This lets us interact with the virtual world around us, outside of our room. This is similar to the effect you've seen from Ocean Rift, for example. In a bonus project this week, I will also show you how to destroy your walls, like we've seen in first encounters from Meta. We will be able to destroy walls, ceilings, and look into the virtual world through them. If you like this type of content, please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to get access to the source code and special projects, please consider supporting me on Patreon. If you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now, let's get started with selective pass-through and virtual windows. As always, we start with a brand new Unity project that uses the universal render pipeline. We need the Meta XR SDK as well as the Mixed Reality Utility Kit in this video. We have looked at both in a previous tutorial in depth. Also, like you have seen in previous tutorials, to make our scene work on our MetaQuest device, we make sure to apply all changes in the project setup tool and make sure to switch the platform to Android in the build settings. Now, we would like to replicate this awesome effect from Ocean Rift that lets us create windows underwater to reveal parts of the underwater world. Let's start with the surroundings. I am going to use a video which I will turn into a skybox so we can see the water all around us. Download and import the video of your choice and drag it into the hierarchy. You can see that Unity automatically attaches a video player component for us. Next, we would like to create a render texture. On our new render texture, we need to enter the format of our video. If you are unsure about it, just click on the video and select source info to reveal all the information you need. Type in the format and select None for the depth stencil format. On the video player, change the render mode to render texture and drag our render texture into the field. Lastly, we need a material that we can use as our skybox. Create a material and select the skybox panoramic shader. Here we can then assign our render texture and drag the material into our scene to apply our new skybox. Let's now set up our scene. We add an OVR camera rig and then add an OVR pass-through layer component to it. Make sure to set the placement to underlay. We then also have to check the scene support and pass-through support on the OVR manager component. Very importantly, the project setup tool wants to apply a transparent background to our camera. You should not apply that change since otherwise we cannot see our skybox anymore through our windows just leave the settings on your camera on Skybox. Next, we add the MRUK and the Effect Mesh components to our scene. If you are not sure how to use those, check out my video about the Mixed Reality Utility Kit here. In the Effect Mesh component, we would like to apply a material that allows us to only render pass-through on our walls and furniture. For this, we create a new material, which we call Pass-Through. Here, we want to select a different shader under Oculus, and then selective pass through. We need to adjust here is the blend color, which should be on subtract. And then we set render queue to 3000 to render the room in front of the skybox. We can now assign this material to the inspector. Let's test our scene now. The material looks black in the editor, but inside our headset, we can now see our walls in pass through mode. Now, how can we cut windows into our walls? We will use a shader for this. Create a standard surface shader and open it up in your code editor. I called my shader stencil because it will look like we are cutting holes into our walls. Every pixel on your screen can be thought of as having a tiny invisible layer that can hold a number, which represents the stencil buffer. This shader assigns a specific stencil ID to the pixels of the object it's applied to. The stencil section configures the shader to mark certain areas of your scene with a unique identifier, allowing you to selectively reveal or hide parts of the virtual world, like creating transparent windows in solid objects. The key parts of this shader are setting the stencil ID, turning off depth writing to ensure the shader doesn't interfere with how objects are layered in the scene, and using a blend mode that essentially makes the shader's visible output transparent. This technique is very efficient for VR and real-time applications. 
because it doesn't require complex geometry modifications or multiple cameras. Instead, it cleverly uses the graphics hardware to control where certain visuals appear. Now we are ready to create a material from our shader. We do this by right-clicking on it and creating a new material. We set the stencil ID to 1 in order to uniquely mark certain areas for special visual effects. Lastly, since we already use one shader, namely the pass-through shader, we need to make extra sure that the stencil shader is rendered above the pass-through shader. If you remember, the pass-through shader's render queue was set to 3000. We want to set the stencil shader's render queue to 3000, and therefore we reduce the pass-through shader to 2000 and select from shader to ensure that these effects are applied at the correct stage of rendering, creating precise visual layers in our scene. Fantastic. However, we need one more step before our stencil shader can actually cut out areas of other game objects. Let's create two cubes to visualize this better. On the cube in the back, we assign the pass-through shader, and we apply the stencil shader to the one in front. Firstly, we need to assign a layer to the game objects that should be cut through. Therefore, we assign a wall layer to the cube in the back. Next, we go to the project settings under quality and select the renderer asset that is active in our project. Here we first would like to remove the wall layer from the opaque layer mask. Next, we add a new renderer feature. We select the render objects option and call our feature walls. Make sure that the event here is set to after rendering. So we will render our walls after the windows. In the filters section, we select opaque for the queue and wall for the layer mask. Next, in the overrides, we check the stencil checkbox and set the value to 1, just like we did on the stencil material. Lastly, select not equal as the compare function. Awesome! You can already see now that our cube in front cuts into our cube in the back. Now, to apply this effect to our walls, we need to have some logic that applies the wall layer to our walls as soon as they are spawned. For this, we will create a new script called layer applier. Inside, there's a public method, get room object and apply layer, that's meant to be triggered as soon as our room has been loaded from the mixed reality utility kit component. This method looks for the MRUK room component in the hierarchy, which is on the object that holds all our walls and furniture. We then want to change the layer of this object and all its children by calling apply layer, a helper method that takes a game object and a layer name, then sets the game object's layer and recursively does the same for all its children. It uses Unity's function layermask.name to layer to find the layer's numeric ID from its name and applies it. We then go through each child object and ensure that all room objects are on the same layer and will get ignored by our stencil shader. We can now add this component to the effect mesh and call the get room object and apply layer method from the scene loaded event. If we now press play, as soon as the room has loaded, we can see that all the objects are on the wall layer. Fantastic. All that's left to do is to create our window and the logic to attach it to our walls. Let's create an empty game object and reset its transform. Then we need a nice visual for our window. This could be anything, but I downloaded a 3D model of a porthole from Sketchfab. Take your time to scale and position it correctly. Then I would like to create a point light in front of it to create more of a feeling of being in a submarine. Lastly, we need a shape for our window that makes a cut into our walls. Therefore, we create a cylinder and shape it accordingly. So it covers the window. All that's left to do now is to apply the stencil material and save our window as a prefab by dragging it from our scene into our project. Let's now create a new script and call it Window Maker. This script will allow us to position our windows on the walls. The script uses public game object variables to reference the object to be placed and a visual aid which acts as our pointer. It initializes necessary components in the initialized method, setting up a layer mask to identify walls, instantiating the debug visual, and fetching an audio source for later playing a sound when we place an object. In the update method, we first check if the script is properly initialized. Then, we calculate the position and direction of the right controller to create a ray. If this ray intersects with a wall, layer object, it positions the debug visual at the hit point on the wall. 
When the user presses the index button, the script places the window at the hit location, adjusting its position slightly off the wall to avoid an overlap with the wall, and rotates it to face away from the wall, simulating a realistic window placement. Finally, it plays a sound effect to confirm the placement. Let's go back to Unity and click on the MRUK game object. Here we attach the window maker component and call the initialized method as soon as the room is loaded. Then we also attach an audio source component. Assign here any sound you like. Then, in the window maker, we assign the window we created and something that represents a pointer. For this, I literally just created a very small sphere. Lastly, make sure to add colliders to your effect mesh, otherwise our pointer cannot detect the walls. We can then finally go ahead and test out our finished product. Fantastic! We can now position realistic windows in our room that let us watch the underwater world in the virtual space. I also added some blue color to my pass-through. If you want to know how to style your pass-through, check out my video here. In a special project that is only available to Patreon supporters, I will show you how to achieve the mesh destruction that we know and love from Meta's First Encounters app. So definitely check this one out. And that's it guys, I hope you learned a lot and I hope you got some ideas for your own games. Again, please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my Patreon, especially to get the extra project this week which lets you destroy walls in your room. Don't forget to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.